Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Gonna give you a little update on the lead time 48 volt inverter, what I've been working on. So let's get right into it. So if you watched the last video, you can see I've made some changes. Did you not see the first video on this inverter? I'll put a link in the description for you to you know, catch up on this if you like. And you can see I've got some conduits, I've got a panel, got a PV disconnect and all kind of stuff. Some other items we'll talk about in a minute. But let me go ahead and start off with a couple of gripes on this inverter, not its operation, just configuration. As you can see on our AC power side, we've got standard trade size knockouts right here. Easy to connect conduits to, you can seal tight. Um, you know, regular EMT, whatever kind of conduits you want to connect to, that make it easy right here. But on the DC side for the PV and the battery, these are oval. They're not standard trade size knockouts. So I can't really run a, you know, seal tight or a EMT or anything like that on the battery or the PV side. And at 48 volt battery leads, I prefer to have a conduit coming down to a gutter tray or to a DC combiner. That way this battery cable is protected. And my application's not that big a deal. There's nobody gonna be in the powerhouse besides me, no unauthorized users, whatever. So not a big deal, low risk for damage for me, but keep that in mind if you have children uh, or pets or anything that can access these wires, you, know, you may wanna take extra layer precaution, put a some kind of wire loom or a sheath on the PV cause you know, we can get to 100, 150 volts right here. Uh, you know, very high voltage DC. So just make a note of that. As you can see, I've got a PV disconnect right here installed for the lead time inverter. Uh, I'm gonna be conservative with the inverter. I'm not gonna max it out at 4,400 watts coming into here. I'm gonna put, uh, I've got 800 watts of bifacial panel laying around. So I'm gonna start with 800 watts of bifacial, grow from there. The conduit from this little HT five-way box goes out here to a PV combiner so I can attach more arrays uh, coming up. I still got to make an array mount for those panels and then trench in and connect all that outside. I'll show you that when I get to it. So I got a little HT five-way uh, DIN rail box right here for the PV. Uh, these boxes have improved a lot over the last couple years. Uh, the first one I bought, the threads for the screws would just strip out if you barely torqued it down. They've reinforced the plastic, made the plastic a lot harder on the base plate uh, for the cover. So you can actually get some torque on the screws now. The cover sits nice. It's got a seal. These are rated for outdoors. I personally wouldn't use them outdoors, but they make great little boxes for indoors. So I got a little Chitaxi 25 amp breaker right there. And then I got a Weingart surge protection device wired in. Uh, to this system, it's ready to go out there in the combiner. I just got to tie panels in right there and it'll be ready to be fed. So I don't have any PV on here yet. Let me go over here to the panel first. So I've got my grid power in, which is from 12 volt inverter. And I've got my output coming to its own. Uh, these are square D home line panels right here, really affordable. So this is the 48 volt panel. There's the main coming into the panel and then circuit one is just right here just a simple receptacle just for testing things with right now i plan to expand this out uh, eventually and then here's the 12 volt uh, panel from the 12 volt inverter that's behind me so i've got the 12 volt inverter is my grid for the 48 volt inverter it's a 3000 watt 12 volt inverter feeding a 3500 watt you know 48 volt inverter I'm not planning on running any loads pass through from, from the 12 volt through the 48 back out to this circuit right here. This is strictly for charging cause 12 volt system is where the bulk of the batteries is and the bulk of the PV is on the 12 volt system. So this is strictly for charging. I got it current limited at the moment too, to not overwhelm the 12 volt inverter if I'm using it for other things. So let me kill the light right there. We can see that screen. And then I will demonstrate the 12 volt charging. So turn that breaker on. And then we'll have a little icon come up right there. There we go. So see the voltage climb back up from the 12 volt inverter. We just got hit with that inrush current. So let it stabilize for just a minute and I'll show you the readings off of the 12 volt uh, shunt as well. So you hear the cooling fans engage on the lead time inverter when we're charging. So it keeps the charge circuitry nice and cool. No risk of overheating so let it ramp all the way up just trying to show you a whole demonstration of everything how it's going so there we are we're charging from the 12 volt grid i've only got one battery hooked up for now 
So I've got it current limited at 20 amps of charge. So you can see right there, I'm dumping 19.6 amps into the Vader server rack battery. Then over here on the 12 volt system, you can see uh, 1200, 1230 watts. I've got a couple of other accessories running. So I'll go ahead and kill the light and show you everything that's running on it. So drop that out. So that's strictly the feed going over to the 48 volt inverter. Turn my light back on. All right, so enough cooking power out of the 12 volt. I'm trying to save that for other purposes. So I'll come over here and just hit the grid breaker right there and it'll settle back down and stop charging. And then back to the inverter consuming power. So that's about all I've got done on this so far. I've got to get a battery combiner box to go right there to tie in all the batteries that's gonna be on the 48 volt system. So waiting to get a DC combiner right there, then I'll tie all these batteries in and I'll have a breaker going to the you know, inverter right now I'm relying on just a single battery this breaker and I leave it off when I'm not in here working with it so you know inverter will have its own breaker in the combiner and each battery bank will have its own breaker to the combiner to a common bus bar and everything in that combiner box and you know just running off the, the Vader right now I've got a repower flow golf cart battery right there to hook in so nobody likes my golf cart battery videos so we're going to use a golf cart battery and an off-grid application then I've got two 24 volt, uh, 25.6 lithium, of course, X, Z, and Y batteries. Gonna series these together, uh, bring these into the system. Then I've got four cycling bat low temp minis. Uh, these were the ones that were $130 on Black Friday. So I had the test one right here. So I bought three more to go with it to make a 51.2 volt, 48 volt pack. So I'll be doing, showing you a balancer setup on this if you prefer to use you know, four by 12, or if you want to do two by 24 or straight up 48s, whatever you want, they all work fine together with each other. Showing you different options cause some people want straight server racks. Some people like these big monster golf cart batteries with their huge BMSs and stuff in them. Some people, I mean, just, you know, whatever floats your boat, as long as it comes out to 16S or 51.2 volt and all this does. So each one of these batteries will, will have their own breaker going down to the combiner. And then of course, up to the inverter. Standalone charge controller right here, uh, Outback FM80. And I'm trying to leave room for a couple of more charge controllers for the 12 volt system. It needs uh, more PV, something serious too. So I'm gonna try to make room for a FM80 for the 12 volt, maybe two FM80s for the 12 volt, and then a third FM80 somewhere uh, that's going to feed the 48 volt system. So all kinds of stuff to do. Just been real busy. Uh, just give me an update. Let you know the inverter. You know, I've run this battery down halfway a couple of times. I'll charge it back up. I'm going to have excess solar power. I run it back down about halfway since it's, you know, mainly just sitting there. I don't want it sitting in a full state of charge. So I'll bring it back down, charge something with it back down about halfway and then shut it down and mess with it again a week later, stuff like that. But you know, so far the inverter is good. Very good efficiency on it. Very quiet. Um, you know, I like it so far. I have another update soon. Questions, put in the comments, please, and I will cover it in the next update. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good day.